Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today I am getting real about how to tell if you're a lesbian. If you have been questioning your sexuality recently, maybe because you watched my coming out video or maybe because you have just started feeling some different feelings and you're not sure what it all means, well, you're in luck because I am going to give you some advice on exactly how to figure out if you are gay or maybe bisexual or just bi curious. So let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel. Are you serious with me? Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> I don't understand how these things always happen to me. So about a year ago now, I came out to my friends and some of my family as bisexual. Now, I thought I was bisexual at the time because growing up, I had always had crushes on girls. I had fallen in love with friends that were girls. Obviously, I never told them about it. I had a uh, sexual attraction toward girls and I made out with some girls. And then as I got older, I also slept with girls. But because I didn't really see any kind of examples around me, of girls that were into other girls. Like none of the TV shows or the movies that I watched were showing examples of that. And pretty much all of the media I consumed and all of the people that I was surrounded with were straight. So I just naturally assumed I was straight and maybe this was a phase or a curiosity. And for some of the time, I actually felt bad about these feelings. I thought maybe that it meant there was something wrong with me. And then, as I got older, I obviously started to see as, you know, we are going into becoming such a much more open-minded and accepting society now that it was becoming normalized. And I was seeing examples in the media I was consuming and in the people I was meeting that it was totally normal and okay to be a girl who was into other girls. And so at the time I realized that this must mean I was bisexual because I'd always had these feelings for girls. And it never occurred to me that I didn't have feelings for men, that men would not be a part of my sexuality because I'd always been this super boy crazy girl growing up. I always had massive crushes on boys and I was always dating boys or in relationships with men. And as anyone who has followed this YouTube channel for a while knows, or who has read my columns, I also had a lot of sex with men. And I thought that in order to be gay, in order to be a lesbian, I would have to be repulsed by having sex with men. And obviously I wasn't repulsed enough to not do it. So therefore I must be <laughs> bisexual. I didn't start to actually interrogate that idea of being bisexual. And maybe if that was the correct term for myself, until I started to learn about a concept called compulsory heterosexuality. This was something that I found out about just a couple of months before I publicly came out as gay and it changed my life. And I wanna tell you about it because I think it's going to potentially change your life as well and help you on this journey of working out where you sit along the spectrum. So compulsory heterosexuality is essentially the idea that heterosexuality or being straight is the default setting, that it's assumed and enforced upon us, that if we meet a woman, we assume that that woman is straight unless she tells us otherwise. And that concept basically trickles through in so many aspects of our lives. Growing up, girls are often read fairy tales that enforce this idea. They show a prince rescuing a princess in a tower and then the prince and the princess go off into the sunset and marry each other. We don't see two princesses going off into the sunset and marrying each other. So that concept is normalized. We really, particularly as women, are sold this idea that it's very aspirational, that it's really the goal in life for us as girls to be picked by a boy, to be chosen by a man. And that until we are chosen by a man, we're not really seen, we're not really visible, we don't have worth or value. And the other way that this can manifest, and this is really interesting and this was a real game changer for me is in the way that you actually feel around boys so for me and for a lot of women I think is the case around boys I would feel excited and nervous if it was a boy that was 
you know, into me, if he was asking me out or if he was flirting with me. And that excitement and that nervousness, I always assumed meant that, well, obviously I like this boy, right? Because why else would I be feeling this way? That's what I've been taught. When you like a boy, you'll get butterflies. But actually there is a big difference between feeling nervousness and anxiety around someone of the opposite gender and feeling actual sexual attraction. Those two things are very different. And actually that nervousness and excitement can really just be a byproduct of compulsory heterosexuality because compulsory heterosexuality tells us you should be really excited if a boy gives you attention. That's like a really big deal. That means you have value and you have worth. And because it is a big deal, it can also make us feel really nervous. If you're actually into someone of the opposite gender though, you should be feeling genuine sexual attraction. And sexual attraction is very different. It's a physical response that our bodies have. We feel aroused, we feel turned on. We fantasize about having sex with that person. We want to have sex with that person. We can't wait to have sex with that person. And when I realized this, it started to become very clear to me that I had never been sexually attracted to men. I was always just having those excited nervous feelings. I was never having the sexual attraction, but I would have sex with men because men wanted to have sex with me. And that made me feel great. That was a form of validation. And a big thing for me, and I think this also is very relevant to a lot of women that have grown up in a similar way. I never really had a stable male role model growing up. I didn't have a good relationship with my father. My father was extremely abusive. I had a very unpleasant childhood growing up and then as an adult I became estranged from my father I've not seen or heard from him or had anything to do with him now for over a decade and that's the way I'm happy with it for my own safety and mental health and that's the way it will be for the rest of my life and so because of that and I think again this is something that so many women go through that don't have these great relationships necessarily with their fathers or their fathers are very absent it means that boys and then as you get to be an adult, men take on a much more heightened sense of importance. Being chosen by a man for me meant that I was gonna have that stable male in my life. And so if a man wanted sex from me, that seems like a really good thing. And so I was willing to do all of the sexual things and be sexual with a man in order to get that validation. When I really reflected on it, I realized that every time I ever had sex with a man, I always had to fantasize about a naked woman. And again, I'd never stop to question that. I just thought everyone just fantasizes about a naked woman when they're having sex with a man. <laughs> Starting to realize that's not the case now. I think the big thing for me that I really realized is that straight women do not sit around and question their sexuality. Straight women do not sit around and wonder, am I bisexual or am I gay? And so if you're even having these thoughts, if you're even questioning it and interrogating it, that's actually a good sign that you potentially don't fall into being straight. You're somewhere outside of that. That might not mean you're a lesbian. It might mean you're bi-curious or bisexual or pansexual or somewhere along the spectrum, but chances are high that it means you're not straight. I really want to talk about the importance of therapy for people who are questioning their sexuality because it's Pride Month and Pride is a time to celebrate being queer and the fact that we now live in a society that embraces people being in all different places on the sexuality spectrum and really just being able to be who you are. But also being queer and being LGBTQIA plus often comes with mental health challenges. It can be really stressful and anxiety inducing to be going through this process of questioning your sexuality. I know it was for me. And so getting that mental health support is so critical. I know how intimidating it is to go and walk into a therapist's office and have to sit across the room from a therapist and sit in that little couch thing that they make you sit on. It can be very intimidating. And actually that's why I opted against doing that and I use an online service called BetterHelp, which some of you guys might have heard me talk about before. And I'm really proud and excited to say that BetterHelp have actually partnered with me today to sponsor today's video to help me spread mental health awareness for the LGBTQIA plus community and for anyone out there who is questioning their sexuality or thinking of exploring it because therapy is so key for this. I cannot stress it enough. What I really like about 
better help is that you don't have to go and sit in a therapist's office and you don't have to pay a ton of money because let's face it, therapy is very expensive and not everyone has the luxury of being able to afford it. One of the reasons I use BetterHelp is because it costs me about a quarter of what I used to pay my therapist to go and sit in a therapist's office. And because you don't have to do that, you can actually speak to your therapist in a way that suits you. So you can actually speak to your therapist via text message, via phone call, or if you're comfortable, video chat. And because you've got those options, you don't need to be scheduling in your appointment months in advance, waiting to get in. You can speak to your therapist on the go at a time that suits you. Any time that you need that support, you can just text your therapist or you can call them and you can have that support there. So when you register for BetterHelp, essentially what they'll do is match you with a therapist who is specifically suited to your needs in your local area within 24 hours. And what I love about this is they have a whole range of LGBTQIA plus trained therapists, people who are queer themselves and can really help walk you through that journey in a really supportive, non-judgmental way. And if you don't like the therapist that you get matched with, unlike when you go to regular therapy and you have to actually go and face your therapist and say, I don't think this is working out and it's kind of like an awkward breakup, you don't have to do any of that. You just go onto the app and let them know that you don't love that therapist and they will just discreetly unmatch you with that therapist and match you with a whole new therapist. So I, I honestly, I can't recommend enough to go and check them out. Like I say, I use them personally. I'll put the link to them in the video description down below so you guys can go and check them out for yourself. Now, speaking of labels, I think this is one of the things that people really get stuck on. And I know it held me back for quite a long time in coming out and identifying as a lesbian because I was worried that what happens if I say I'm a lesbian and I made a big old mistake and it turns out I'm not a lesbian. I'm actually just bisexual. And so I actually spoke to other people in the LGBTQ community and was very reassured and felt just so much more confident in hearing so many people who were gay themselves say that it is totally fine to identify in the way you feel comfortable. And if that changes, you are allowed to change the way you identify. This is the amazing thing about living in a society now that is celebrating Pride Month, that is celebrating identities that don't fit in the little neat box of being straight and wanting to just go and run right off into the sunset and marry someone of the opposite gender. If you have a different concept of how your life should look, you are allowed to embrace that and that is allowed to evolve and change. So don't be afraid of identifying one way because maybe you might change in the future. You are allowed to change and evolve. God knows I have changed and evolved. One of the, the best ways for a lot of people who are sort of starting this journey to identify and certainly something that I see a lot of people in the community really feel most comfortable identifying with is the term of being queer. And I've had actually a few questions in my last video about well, what is queer? What does it mean to be queer? What's really interesting about it is queer used to be an insult. It was a slur that was used, a homophobic slur that was used against people that identified as gay, lesbian or trans. And it's something that over time, the LGBT community actually reclaimed and took that essentially took that term back and used that as a term to empower themselves. And so now the term queer, what it actually means is it's just an umbrella term for anyone that sits outside of being straight. So often people who don't identify as being either a man or a woman who are more non-binary or gender queer or gender fluid will call themselves queer. People who are trans will identify as queer. People who are bi-curious or bisexual will identify as queer and gay and lesbian people often identify as queer. But what I also wanna say is that while labels can be empowering and identifying as a lesbian was really important for me and really empowering for me, the great thing about the world we live in today is that you don't need a label at all. You can also just choose not to label yourself, not to label yourself as straight or gay, but just a human being who is attracted to and loves and has sex with who you are attracted to and who you love. And I, I honestly hope that one day we don't even need labels. We just accept that love is 
love. The main sort of thing I want to say is that if you are questioning your sexuality and you're curious about maybe exploring some things, I would encourage you, I would really encourage you to go ahead and explore it. And don't feel like you have to tell everyone. Tell people only that you feel safe and supported with. Tell a trusted therapist. Really get a support network of people that you can trust on this journey so that you do have that, that support and so that you don't feel like you're doing this journey on your own. But absolutely explore. Life is short for just making ourselves squash into a box that we don't really feel we've ever truly fitted in. I know that I spent so much of my life trying to fit myself into a box that was never ever comfortable for me. And I feel so comfortable right now and so liberated and happy being the person I am. And I hope that this video helps you to do that. And I also hope that it encourages you to prioritize exploring and caring for your mental health as a queer person if you identify as queer or if you're on the beginning stages of identifying as queer and i hope you will go ahead and check out better help there in the description down below and if you want more videos on exploring your sexuality because you found this helpful give this video a thumbs up because that lets me know you want more of this content and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already because i am making more content like this i'm making also sex advice content sex education content because I'm just trying to have the conversations that a lot of people don't seem to be having because I wish these conversations were being had when I was younger. They sure would have been very <laughs> helpful for me. All right, I'm rambling now, so I'm going to go. I will see you guys in the next video. Mwah.